Hi, my name is Candace, and we're here today to talk about our watering system and um, ways that you might be able to water less. So I started out with just a few water barrels and used those and decided that this was really a good way to use a natural resource rainwater and to keep um, my city water bill down. And so I devised this system. The, the rainwater comes off the roof into the barrel and there is a screen over the hole to keep some of the debris off the roof and to also keep mosquitoes from laying eggs in the, in the barrel. And from this barrel, the water overflows into the second one and, and then into the third one. And finally, there is, a, there is an overflow on the last barrel. The first time I set this system up, I decided I might try to use gravity to water the, the raised beds, but I don't have enough gravity to push the water hard enough and into the beds and to flow out like I wanted it to. So I did a lot of research on pumps and I finally found what is called a transfer pump and that's what I use to actually pull the water out of the barrels into the raised beds. So the way the pump works is um, there is an inlet and an outlet on the pump. The um, inlet side comes, uh, comes from the rain barrel and because the end of the hose will not connect to the spout, we actually bought an adapter that allows it to connect di directly to the spout. So what happens is the water comes out of the rain barrel and it feeds into the transfer pump and then it feeds out into the hose, which is going to the raised bed. And what you want to do when you're ready to turn this on is you want to prime the pump first. So you would open up the rain barrel and let the water flow into the pump so that it's primed. And then you'll want to plug it in. You don't want to do the opposite because you don't want to burn your pump out. So that's how the pump works and it will feed into the raised bed and water from there. You know, the watering system is great, but what you really want to do is do most of your work um, ahead of time. And so one of the ways you really want to retain water so you're not always having to water. I don't want to be out in 100 degree weather watering my garden. So things that you can do to set up your garden for success at the beginning of the season is, first of all, to have good soil, good healthy soil. Uh, my soil is, is um, enriched with a lot of manure and once it breaks down, it helps really retain the moisture. So when you do water, it's, it's effective. Another thing that I do every year, which takes intensive planting where you really load the beds up with plants and uh, they actually help shade each other from um, evaporation. And in this bed in particular, this is a really nice setup because the squash leaves are really shading the roots of this Swiss chard. Because it's a leaf vegetable, the Swiss chard is really susceptible to wilting in this heat. And I think that having the squash plants shade the, the roots helps the Swiss chard immensely.